1973 home, uh, well above a million dollars. We're in the memorial area. Uh, we got some roof leaks, uh, some porch safety issues, uh, some AC issues, some pool stuff. But one thing I want to keep aware of, it's a 1973 home. Old homes come with old problems, million dollar homes come with million dollar problems. But it doesn't mean that this house is actually bad. It just determines if the, the buyer wants to accept these issues moving in. From the last house they inspected from, this one is like brand new. So don't be alarmed by the things that we find here. All right, let's go check it out. All right, made it to the roof. Um, don't ask how I got up here. Several people, including my wife, will not approve. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so on a, on a flat roof, you always want to pay attention to all the penetrations and make sure that there's not a heavy amount of standing water on this polymembrane type roof. You are allowed a little standing water, but whenever it starts to get excessive or you can really see continuous amounts of water or it's not uh, evaporating in a 12 hour time period, that's whenever you're running into issues. So you can see right here behind the uh, chimney area, you can see that it is holding quite a bit of water over there and that's not gonna evaporate in a fair amount of time. Uh, the next area that you really wanna pay attention to is all the penetrations. You wanna look at each and every plumbing stack to make sure that it's sealed up properly. You wanna look at the flues to make sure that they are sealed up. Typically I like them painted. They are not painted today, so we will recommend for that. And uh, you wanna look at your turbines, make sure the turbines are performing properly. Here they are freely turning in the wind, which that means that they're performing uh, pretty well. Um, this roof, what we'll do to really make sure that it's not leaking because it just recently rained and we have standing water, what we're going to do is we're going to go underneath the roof and check it with our FLIR cameras to see if we have any active uh, penetration. All right, um, do some general scans of the roof to show you these and then check out the next items. All right. All right, so the first thing that we have here, pretty easy spot. You can see the porch supports, they're completely gone and uh, they're wadded through. I would not recommend using this. I did use this to get on the roof because it's the only access point, but uh, don't do as I do, do as I say <laughs> when it comes to this. I did get up on the roof, I was able to inspect it, but definitely this is something that the buyers are gonna wanna take care of moving into this property or negotiate it, but this is a safety issue that they're gonna knock out. All right, the next item that we found on the interior of this home is we have uh, hardwood floors on the inside. This home was built in the 1970s and whenever they poured these foundations back in the 70s, sometimes they used like this paper felt paper for the moisture barrier between the ground and the foundation. We didn't really use to uh, synthetic type material yet. And so that deteriorates underneath the foundation and eventually it creates these water stains on any uh, wood flooring. And what happens is, is the water wicks up underneath, comes through the concrete because it's porous, and it will stain your flooring. There's nothing you can do about this. Other than, and it can actually kind of give you weird false readings because you're trying to determine where the moisture is coming from. So uh, right here I'll show you where the moisture is active and the only thing you can do is replace your floor with a tile floor. If you put wood here, Another wood floor here is just going to happen again because moisture is coming up from the ground and uh, staying in your floors. So you can see right here, moisture meter. You can see where I, it's dry for the most part, and then you come over the same, and uh, you're, you're going to have to moisture readings. Again, there's no fix for it. You can't dig underneath the house and put a whole new moisture barrier. The only thing you can do is new floors. So with this and other spots, you can see right here. Oh, there you go, a little bit of activity in there. Um, but then one spot that you can actually prove that it is coming from outside is normally around the edges. And you can see how this stain looks a lot different than the other stain. It's not a solo stain in the middle of the floor. You can see it, uh, it's coming in from the outside. 
A lot of the times this comes from grading issues or a roof issue. And uh, you can see that this is actually active right here. Very active. And our heaviest point is right here, right in the solar spot. And uh, this can actually be deceiving too as well because these floors are reflective and it won't even show up in the clear. Uh, it won't show up very well. So you want a moisture meter to find these items. So right over here, that's where the area where we had the moisture, it lines up perfectly with this wall. And you can see where we're actually having a drainage issue. We have a lot of water pouring in this area and you can even see the discoloration of the brick. So it's a combination of things. Our gutters are poorly sloped uh, water's running against this brick wall. We have some mortar improvements and then we actually have poor drainage over here. So with all of this combined, it's actually allowing water to enter the property and damage the wood floors more in that area. All right, we find this on pretty much every single property, especially older properties. Your inspectors will call it out. You have two options. You can either remove it or treat it. So the first thing is you have a lot of heavy foliage, you have high soil, and high soil doesn't just allow moisture to enter the property, but it's a perfect environment for termites. The reason why it's perfect is because they can be there, everything they need to survive, and you won't even know they're there until they cause damage. So we want to take the foliage off the wall or treat it. And the same thing, you want to lower the mulch down or have it treated too as well. All right, so the property is 6,000 square feet, and 6,000 square feet, you need a lot of tonnage or a lot of AC to cool something like that. So here we actually have four units, and we like to document the age for our clients. We have a 2012, a 2010, a 99, and one that's even older than 1999. So they're actually all performing. The house is cooling down at a really nice rate, but one thing they need to be aware of is that they have two units coming are at their end of their life. They're at the end of their life, so it's just something that they need to be aware of. Hey, moving in, hey, we're probably gonna have to replace some AC units. Moving on to the next part of the equipment on the outside over here, we have some pool equipment, and uh, we'll just kind of cover that piece by piece uh, in a second. All right, we're gonna talk a little louder. We got a lot of equipment running around us, uh, but right here, let's talk about the pool equipment. There's actually most, for the most part, it is performing. Uh, it looks like someone has come in and serviced it before me. Uh, they have a sand filter, they have two uh, pool pumps, one for the sweeper and one for the actual pool itself. They have a pool blower here and then they have a uh, heater for the pool. So pool sweeper motor, it was inoperative, it's really noisy whenever I operated it. And uh, the, pool, the uh, pool blower is inoperative too as well. All this equipment uh, easily replaced and easy, easily repaired. But the thing that concerns me the most is how far this equipment has to travel. It has to travel almost about 70 feet all the way to the pool. So it has to travel pretty far. And we want to make sure that the pressure is adequate enough to pull, uh, to rotate that pool water properly. Uh, so we'll document it as is. We found some other issues on the pool itself and we'll go over there and talk about it. But the first step is, is whenever we're looking at this pool, for normal home inspection reasons, we are not normally going to inspect this pool. We'll pass it off to someone else because we can't see the bottom of the pool. You can see how foggy it is. And whenever you can't see the bottom of the pool, it's not safe for, I guess, insurance reasons for the inspector to inspect it. But the client was pretty adamant. So we'll just document that we can't see the bottom of the pool and then document all the other things wrong with it, so such as all the all the defects with the equipment and anything else that we find on the exterior of the surface of this pool. So we'll cover some of that uh, as we come across it. To mitigate some of, I didn't inspect it right away. I was hoping to get rid of some of the fogginess. So the first thing I did is I came in and I turned on the equipment. This is a really big house, so it's going to take us several hours to to inspect it. So we have reduced some of the fogginess. I can actually start to see the bottom steps over here and I can about see it halfway through the shallow end. So maybe I'll be able to knock this out before we leave uh, in the pool. Oh, and I can even see the bottom of the uh, hot tub too as well, which is nice. Uh, the biggest thing that uh, sticks out to me with this pool 
is that there is a skimmer basket. There's a lot of water that runs through here and we have a crack right through the skimmer basket. So this is an easy area for water to get behind the surface and it can cause upheaval and uh, damage the pool. But the kidney shaped pool, I actually find the least amount of defect for it. Not sure why, some engineer could probably tell you why, uh, but this is the most structurally sound pool I normally see as a kidney shaped pool. Another thing we found outside, it's actually kind of hard to figure it out a little bit, I guess. Depends. <laughs> uh, we, have a, uh, we have a grill out here and they actually uh, use CSST, which is corrugated stainless steel tubing uh, for gas. That is approved uh, to run gas to this grill, uh, but CSST is not allowed to be buried. And it's buried from here all the way to the gas meter and it's improperly installed at the gas meter too as well. So I'll show you that. So you can see right here at the gas meter, this is where they actually have copper uh, transporting gas and that's not that's not an uh, approved method of transporting gas anymore. And then also you can see the CSST line running through the ground and uh, there's actually not even a shutoff for it either. So that is, that's, that's just as dangerous. So we need to ask them to remove this and maybe just switch that grill to propane, pro, propane over there. Okay, moving on to the inside of the roof inspection, we're using the FLIR camera just to try to identify any type of water leaks on the inside. Uh, the funny thing is, is we had several water stains in the area and all the areas where we had water stains, all of those came up inactive. And then we had active readings where we just didn't predict that we would have active readings, which is, which is pretty funny. So uh, let me show you how we go about scanning a room and then also uh, the areas where we found active and inactive water leaks. Uh, so whenever I'm scanning these areas, one thing you want to keep in mind about an infrared camera or a FLIR or a thermal imaging camera, whatever you want to call it, um, is that they detect anom anomalies, temperature anomalies. They don't see behind walls. So I see a temperature difference and then I'll further investigate. So you don't pull off what you see right here as fact. You're, you see it, you judge what may, may or may not be happening and then you confirm evidence with a moisture meter by going in the attic. So right here, you can see I'm scanning these areas. I have some weird cold spots. The reason why I'm getting such high cold spots is I have a another, I have an air register right over here and it's blowing against the wall right here. And uh, so what I do to confirm these spots is I use my moisture meter to go over it to see if I have anything active. So I have a water stain, I have high cold areas, and Brendan is running past me. <laughs> and we're just trying to see if this is active or not. So you can see right here, going across it, I'm doing the non-intrusive test, and I can see I'm not getting any active active readings in this area. Another thing that you can kind of do sometimes in areas that won't be seen is you can switch to the uh, prong setting and they're obviously going to want to paint this area anyways and uh, I like to test them uh, just with an intrusive test too as well just to confirm. Only in areas that typically won't be seen or they're going to repaint anyways and I like to do that test as well. Going back on the fact that it detects anom anomalies <laughs> is that's a very circular spot and anything normally that is a circular spot is normally related to water. So compared to the other spots where it looked like air distribution, where it was a like linear and stretched, that normally I would say is air movement, lack of insulation. And right here you can see where it's circular. So we have standing water on, our, on the roof in the same exact spot. We have a circular spot, so that, that I'm just going to call it an active moisture reading after I hit it with a protein meter too as well. So just another spot in the master bedroom and you can see that circular water stain. Uh, you actually don't see anything coming through uh, the paint right here. It hasn't been patched or painted. So this is a water leak that hasn't even shown up yet as a cosmetic defect yet. So 
There's a bathroom right above it. We ran water through the house. We always scanned the house at the end with the clear camera. And boom, that water stand about a water leak. So right here, uh, what we have is a piece of ductwork that's running along the lines of this room. And you can see a lot of action here. This is just a prediction, just from experience. But what's happening is that ductwork is resting on the ceiling. They run this AC really, really cold, and it will start to condensate and uh, ca causing water stains and they came in and patched it in the past. Uh, the picture was a little bit more clear earlier, but the uh, AC shut off because we had the house so cold. So we dropped it down. We might try to get you another picture, but if not, just believe me. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the bathroom. Okay, so what we have here in the FLIR camera is, or the infrared camera is, we have a duct that's either been covered up or um, we have a hole in the ductwork. And the reason why you're coming up to that prediction is because you see what a water stain looks like. You can see how it's right, round, circular, and solid. Here, it's streaky. You can see the, the air lines shooting out in a bunch of different angle, angles. And that means that there's some sort of air deficiency happening in this area. The only way you can find out is to cut through the sheetrock. We're not allowed to do that. So we document that we have something going on with the air duct in this area and I'll let them figure it out. The moisture meter, it came back negative. All right, so that's it. That's Christmas Day Action. If you have any home inspection questions, please give us a call and please like and subscribe to the videos. Thanks guys, bye.